Alors, rebonsoir. Good evening again. Thank you for being here. And still resisting the call for drinks. I would like to welcome Mr. Robert Zarada, who is going to talk to us about sharing economy, the new economic model based on sharing. We would like to now give him the floor for 10 minutes. Good evening. Thank you so much for being here despite the heat and the time of day. Yes, I have been made Knight of the Legion of Honor, but this is not the reason why I am here and I actually forgot myself about this title. I just wanted to talk to you on behalf of the Jean Jaurès Foundation. Uh, we have are publishing a book I am happy to share with Catherine Jolie. She worked a lot with me on social matters throughout the works of the different ministers in the last few decades using the works of the different think tanks and Arthur de Grave. You saw earlier, he was the lawyer and we worked with different working groups and we summarized the question. I will ask several questions. So it's about sharing, an economy of sharing to share economics. We originally wanted to think about an old model, a model which is considered a secular today. It's the model which has been structured throughout time called mutualist model. It has been emerging for a century, thinking that we could learn lessons in order to share economics. This mutualist chapter seems to be the right alternative for the market in different verticals, specifically emerging about 50 years ago specifically trying to mutualize social services and health services. So we have talked about this topic with different people, talked to economists, historians, sociologists, entrepreneurs, and we realized that if we remain locked up, just talk about mutualist models, mutualized models, we were limiting the scope of our work. This didn't allow us to go further, to look for more modern shapes of mutual sharing, whether we're sharing power or sharing assets or sharing money or sharing production or consumption. So we very quickly went beyond the mutualist model And I'm going to talk to you about three questions we talked about so already when we talk about mutualist values. We see these values as being sustainable, durable. So there are different names we give to shared economy. Shared economy could mean collaborative, cooperative, shared consumption, different types of names we give. These concepts being all intertwined. And my speech tonight will include three points. The three questions I can ask the first one, I'm trying to tell you about it in a simple way. The first question is, what are the different shapes and forms of a shared economy 
Are they the right alternative forms to the capitalist economy, market economy, liberal social economy? That, is it a real alternative? This is the first question. The second question is, what are the conditions today which could allow us to reach positive sharing economy? To see real economy emerging, existing, what are the rules for this shared economy? And the third question is a question which might sound really simple and simplistic, but we're talking about shared economy, but what do we share? So these are the three questions I wanted to talk about tonight to try and share with you the ideas in this book. It is uh, also a, in this book, the opinion provided is quite close to Jean Jaurès's ideas. So first question, today are we facing a new type of economics? Before doing this job, I as a marketing consultant, I worked in economics in the university environment, and I am talking today about this. And what surprises me is that these are the same questions which were arising 20, 50 years ago. At any time where we see economic turmoil, we wonder, are these the normal turmoils of a capitalist market? Or are we going through a breakthrough? So we have seen breakthroughs throughout history, you know, with Taylor, Ford, the different movements. Are we going through such transformation? Or do we just face challenges, turmoil in the economic market? Karl Marx used to call it the capacity to the system to go beyond the contradictions. And to go beyond existing contradictions, we need to find different products, different forms. Like, for example, Ford was existing after Taylor, and automation has been growing as a new era. So this was the first question. And we started a debate. And I actually wanted to mention that when we talk about sharing economy. For example, Uber being a typical example, Uber seems to be self-management in the end, giving a job to people who manage cars. So is it a humanist approach creating new economies and new ways to employ people? Or are we just adjusting markets? In the case of Uber, I think we all know the answer. But in other types of organizations, do we feel we are producing alternative forms and shapes? It could be a bit of both. And I think we, re we see a real switch, a change in paradigm. What we see today is that people are reading economics in a different way. Mi microeconomics is taking over macroeconomics, like a revenge. What I mean is we see that there are less and less large macroeconomic changes. The macroeconomics initiatives have less and less meaning, and we can see that the system is being completely changed and transformed through micro initiatives, through sharing ecosystems, through sharing platforms. This is the reality today. It starts with microeconomics, and I think this is the first strong breakthrough. And the second point, which is making me think that we are seeing changes. In the last decade, we have seen the economic system changing. 
We don't have such a horizontal process anymore. We don't see there are employers and contractors, top-down approach. So it is rather more of a horizontal approach where we see brainstorming in large groups, ideas coming from the field. We see startups becoming large companies which have actually been created by people on their own and not coming from employees. And even the policies, the political scope is also reflecting this change. We talk about the verticality of the measures of our president. But the parties, political parties, have a vertical organization. This is what they're based on. But they actually to give way to the horizontal approach. So even in providing opinions, in people's social profiles, we see more and more of a cross-cutting of a horizontal approach rather than top-down. So the conclusion we reached is pretty simple. We said we shouldn't judge reading about 60 pages and say we're going through a complete breakthrough after a capitalist economy. But I think we need to draw a number of rules so that these ecosystems, these bubbles created around the shared economy could coexist and live together with the normal business economy that we know. And then the next question is that if the shared economy remains as a sort of alternative, complementary economy to compensate the weaknesses of certain public services, health services, would that work or would this shared economy become the majority? And would the shared economy gather a number of stakeholders coming from the classic market economy? And then would they be able to perform? This was our next question. What would be the rules for the market-driven economy? and the sharing economy to coexist, to live together and thrive. So we talked about this a lot. And the debate led us to think that we need to create the right working conditions. Employees' working environment need to be compatible with their own well-being first and need to give them a possibility to develop because we talked about conflicts and precarious work positions. I was talking about Uber, and, and we know this is a reality. These jobs are rather precarious. So we need to find conditions to protect individuals. And very fast, we noticed that there was there is momentum. And this will lead us to a breakthrough in the Taylor time and Ford time, created social movements, collective bargaining that led to social security. These initiatives did actually almost directly come from Marxist theories about collective protection. So now we see clearly that thanks to these ecosystems, different stakeholders, going for different types of jobs, sounding like temporary jobs, freelancers. These systems are aligning on individual careers and individual development. 
We have heard about the rights of the employees. The evolution of the job market has led to individuals' development. And because we individualize the solutions, then what is the solution? Then we see that the liberal approach is not compatible. We need to find something which is somewhere in the middle between collective interest, general interest, and uh, make it more consistent with individual development plans. So that's why we went back to the roots of our thought process. We thought, how do we generate mutual interest? Interest make this shared economy interesting to individuals and to the market, then it would be relevant to the community to regulate this shared economy we also need to provide social services that will align on individual interest rather than struggling between individual interest and collective interest so this has been implemented in very practical ways, but I think we need to change the way that we consider entrepreneurs and companies. Companies have always been seen when they started out as a community. different people getting together around a common interest. But back in the days, actually, this objective was reduced to just being an entity creating profit. Creating profit for the owner, possibly for the consumer, but not for the employees anymore. So we want to switch from these type of companies to a different type of companies where companies are created differently. So we try to find new actions based on cooperative, collaborative models. So we started building a toolkit, a sort of legal toolkit, which would allow companies to fit this definition. So this comes together with uh, the fact that in our market, our economic system, we have a diversity of entrepreneurs. And in certain sectors, industries, people can compete, but they may not be looking to achieve the same objective. We could compete in food items, distribution, on the other way, try and have a short loop production. And today, what's really significant today is the fact that we are accelerating this trend with the digital transformation. So the digital transformation has been sped up by everything the economists had foreseen. as drivers for communication, transactions. So the digital transition, you know what it looks like. You heard some presentations. So you see people using the digital transition and people trying to escape fines in Brussels because they owe several billions because they are dominating the market. And it can be very difficult to regulate to regulate the platforms and the definition of the competition conditions in order to protect these micro companies versus macro stakeholders. 
because they're not just macro companies anymore. They are supranationals, meaning they can talk about, they can talk cross borders about policies. These are the GAFA companies. The platforms, actually, what do we mean by platforms? This is a very horizontal concept as well. So I think these companies did very well in anticipating the switch from a vertical process to a horizontal process. So these are the answers I wanted to tell you about. We are moving towards uh, a new type of regulations, not just employers, employees, regulations. And the answer to the last question would be about what do we share? This is actually the essential question. If we feel we are sharing always the same thing, either ownership rights through shares and shareholders, or just sharing profits, we can always change the way that we share profit. We could always try and distribute it in a better way so that employees get more. This is what we see nowadays, but what would be the motives to try and implement actions for individuals and communities and share something else? And what can we share differently? Well, we can first share assets, heritage, looking at Airbnb and different companies. People want to share their heritage. And what we see is people actually filling the gaps of the market for people to create their own income. So we see new ways to produce and to consume. We see the short circuit production, short loop production, responsible production. We also share a mutual interest, as I mentioned earlier, just a couple of minutes. I think we find mutual interest in a way to feed back common goods into the system. We can recreate then collective and cooperative sharing. And the last point I wanted to mention, which is still really relevant, and it's a transition towards a different topic, actually. It was not easy to mention that during the electoral presidential campaign. It is about wages, income. How many different types of income can we include in our economy? We've been talking about universal minimum wage, and this should be actually the specific type of wages we use in our shared 